you, Randy. That's great. Thank you. You, you sound great in here I, 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 in every respect. So I appreciate that very much and really appreciate everybody being here. Uh, I know it's a Friday afternoon and we're coming towards the end of the conference. Uh, but in my view, this is a vitally important session. And I think about the last 12 months and, you know, sort of COVID and what's happening today. And obviously we're here rather than being in Orlando because of a health related issue, a health crisis. Uh, that has impacted countless people. It's impacted one's ability to go and get uh, treatment or evaluations or checkups just for things that are outside of the scope of COVID. Uh, it's having an impact on hospitals as a result financially. I mean, just so many different things that are impacted here. Uh, and much like our open houses and our virtual tour technology, uh, you know, we started doing that last August, not knowing how valuable it would be and how indispensable it would be for an agent to continue their business. And at the same time, we had no idea that this was going to happen, Mike, but really it was just a mission that you began uh, last year. And I, uh, for those of you who don't know, Mike Vane is our senior vice president with people and uh, oversees uh, all of our staff and, and the attraction of all of our staff. And he's committed uh, to the employee satisfaction of every single person in the company. He does a phenomenal job and he's also committed to the health and well-being of our agents. So, Mike, why don't we start with you if it's OK? Uh, you really led the way on this. Uh, yeah. What what was it about it? You know, the topic of healthcare and putting good healthcare in the hands of agents that was important to you personally, and what were you hoping to accomplish? Yeah, you know, and, and I, I appreciate Jason. You know, what I was hoping to accomplish for agents, uh, first of all, was healthcare. Healthcare. That that's the really kind of the main thing was healthcare. And what I like to say is, you can, as you all know, you can be a, a homeowner without having a mortgage. And I also like to say you can have health care without having a large insurance bill. And so that was the focus really was to approach this from how do we solve health care and not how do we solve insurance uh, from there. And we could accomplish uh, both through that. So that was really the focus on how we would lead with this. And then also, you know, as, as I look at it, things of why it might be personal to me uh, you know, I really have three things that made it personal for me as we looked to, to set out for this. The first was a personal experience that I had in my early adulthood. In my early adulthood, I was 20 something years old and uh, uh, I ended up having my appendix rupture. That's not something that you can go and plan on, uh, but without having some type of insurance or some type of coverage there, I would have been uh, devastated financially without that in there. And uh, that helped me. Again, that wasn't something I could plan for, uh, but it was something that was that safety net as I got through kind of the healthcare for that and as I got through on the financial side. So there's a part of that, that that's personal for me. Then as I looked at it, NAR talks about 30% of agents do not have any type of health care. And so for me, I wanted, having that personal experience, wanted to find a way that we could solve that, um, at least within EXP uh, for our agent family here. And then really kind of the third piece of it too is I've spent 20 plus years of my career in corporate health benefits. And as you've probably seen, it gets more and more and more complicated. Nothing gets easier. It gets more complicated. It gets more expensive. Every three years, at least, you're paying twice the amount you did before, at least. And it gets, it gets more confusing. And, and people just, they don't spend time really looking at it and understanding it. And I can, under, I can understand the reason why, um, especially about five years ago. I used to say I could sit down, understand the plan plans that are out there, and it, you, you'd probably be in a conversation with me, and it probably seemed like we were talking a foreign language with me and an a insurance expert. Now I have to pause and try to chase where everything is going, where expenses are going, and so forth. So when I have to do that, I know others are having to do that as well, and the prices have gone up. The laws have gotten more complicated of what we're able to do here, and so that has made it personal for me. So. Again, as you know, what I look to accomplish for our agents over this past year was solving the healthcare issue and not necessarily solving the insurance issue. 
Yeah, so that, and you and I, you and I, Mike, we've had some conversations, you know, in the past about sort of our plan in relation to what other brokerages are holding out, and I want to make sure we we sort of cover that. But how how did you get the Clearwater? How did you end up with Clearwater Benefits as our vendor? And then just by way, and then we'll get to go to Margo. Yeah, you know, I spent time looking at everything, seeing what Compass is doing, seeing what you know a number of are doing, but it was really leading with that thought of the solvent for healthcare. And I remember speaking with Clearwater, and it was we were looking for them; they were looking for us. And one of the things that really drove that conversation was they led with healthcare versus solving for insurance. Um, and so that was important. The other thing is because of the complexity here, there are a lot of things that aren't within the law that you can do, and so forth. And during that conversation, as I, ha as, as I was having that with Clearwater, you know, they were touching on all those pieces. They were, they were making sure that the, everything was within the realms of what the laws have and, uh, and able us to do. And then I would say kind of the third piece to it was um, their concierge services. They wanted to make sure, just like we want to make sure for our agents and our agent and family that you are getting the best. So as I was speaking with them, uh, they wanted to make sure that if we speak with an EXP agent, they want to make sure if you have some type of coverage that is better for you now than what uh, our EXP agent healthcare plans have or anything else that they uh, may have, they were going to make sure that you knew about it and that you stayed with that plan. And so that was important for us uh, because we knew it'd be important for you. We wanted you to be have the best of the best. Fantastic. So I know uh, I'm going to go sort of back and forth among among the participants, but I, let, let's let's get an example here first of all as to why this is so important and the impact that the program is having. Beth Silverman, if you don't mind, you know, I realize as we're up here that Beth and Joe Beth and uh, Doug had been here. Doug had been here. Uh, Beth, you've been uh, here Beth, now for, I think you just said about a year. year. Said about a year. Uh, you've been yeah. very much involved in a number of different things, very engaged. Uh, but you've got a really uh, a, a compelling story, to say the least. Why don't you share a little bit about uh, your experience uh, in choosing a, a health care option through ASP and what drove you to that process? Yeah, thanks, Jason. Um, you know, we often hear that EXP is the most agent-centric brokerage on the planet, and I am living proof of that. Uh, EXP continues to show me how much they value my life, and this health insurance initiative was spectacular. Um, to understand that, you just have to know a little bit about my back story. Um, very healthy person, never broke a bone, never got a bitch. Uh, I was 26 years old, never got sick, and then um, six weeks before my 27th birthday, I was diagnosed with an aggressive form of breast cancer, and they told me I had a 52% chance of surviving five years disease-free. Just to give you the happy ending, we are 15 years later. Uh, I did beat the odds after a year and a half of chemo and 10 surgeries, and even though I overcame uh, my disease, the battle of health insurance began. And I, it's very hard for me to summarize how difficult health insurance has been for me every single year of my life. And as a 1099 employee, I'm sure everyone in this room gets it. And every single year, I would have to battle the marketplace. And I would have to change doctors, start over again with new deductibles. And every year, the stress of this, um, it, it wrecked me. There were many, many times people in my life will attest that I said out loud, it would have been cheaper to die. And anyone who knows me knows I'm the most positive person. I'm, I'm such, you know, I love opportunity. And so fast forward 13 months ago, I joined EXP. And in those 13 months, because EXP is so magical, I tripled my production and I more than doubled my sales, uh, my, my, uh, my income. So why am I telling you guys this? Well, because 2019 was coming to an end and suddenly I needed to show my tax return to get health insurance. And the entire year, as I saw my production going up, I was starting to freak out. Like, how am I going to be able to afford health insurance? 
And I remember being at the conference when EXP announced the initiative and I was sitting in the, the ballroom, which was dimly lit, thank God, because I started to cry. And I thought, oh my God, this is, this might be it. Um, and I was, I was all about it. And I went into EXP world and I sat through the Clearwater benefits class and I thought, well, I've got a unique situation. I need to call them. And first and foremost, the, I spoke to someone named Jake. I wish I knew his last name because the service that I was given and the care and the concern was just outstanding. And the health insurance that I had with the doctors that I loved, oh, thank you for that, Jake Norman, the doctors that I loved, that plan would have went up to $1,100 a month with my former insurance. And it didn't matter that I had started making great money with EXP. I mean, I have bills to pay. I, I didn't know how I was gonna afford it. And then I spoke to Clearwater and I was able to get a plan that was so incredibly comparable. All of my doctors were on it and brace yourself for how much it was going to cost me. $400 a month for a grand total savings yearly of $8,000. $400. And now maybe you guys are thinking, well, how was the plan? Because I switched January 1. Plan is incredible. The service is incredible. During COVID, I got an email from the concierge offering me $5 a month for free at home, like at home workouts for three months. Um, my doctors are all on the plan. My prescriptions cost about $5 less per month. So, hey, that's a savings of 60 bucks a year. That's like a KB Core property boost for free. So my, it, it's been so easy. It, they're so easy to get in touch with. When you call them, you speak to a real human. And I didn't know that this was even possible. And every day I, I just continue to be so grateful and blessed. So my doctors take the plan. The card is easy. My pharmacy takes everything. It felt like nothing changed, but what actually changed was my peace of mind. I feel protected. I feel safe. And I feel like, oh my God, 15 years later, after I was diagnosed with cancer, I'm actually be done for the rest of my life with the stress that I faced every single year. So I'm just so incredibly grateful. Jason, thank you so much for having me here today to tell my story. Well, uh, everything you do, every time you touch the company, Beth, uh, I've been reminded of your energy and how much you contribute and your passion. And I'm just so glad that you're healthy and we'll come back to you in just a little bit. Okay. Uh, Margo, before we get yes. started, you know, I, uh, there's, there was one question that we, we can probably get out of the way pretty quickly and, and before you arrived. And the question in the text chat was, is this, is this uh, coverage, is this available for people who are older than 65 years old if they're with the company? That is a great question, and it is not. Um, because Medicare does a pretty good job of that, and 50% of healthcare costs are spent on people who are 65. And, um, we are limited to six, uh, in ages 18 to 64, up to 65. Okay, and that's true pretty much of any plan out there, am I, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so let's let's talk a little bit about the current environment uh, with COVID. I mean, what the impact of the pandemic on healthcare and health insurance itself. I mean, what, what changes are on the horizon for our agents as a result of COVID-19? It's, it's a great question and it's something that's on everybody's mind. We're all in this bizarre new universe trying to understand what to expect next. Um, we don't really know all the way down the road, but we have learned some things just in the last couple of months. Uh, during, uh, due to the coronavirus, we've seen a rising concern uh, for elective surgeries um, that is, sometimes you don't know whether you're getting the right advice. Do you need to get a second opinion? Um, we've seen that uh, with second opinion, 76% of the time, the doctors differ with the original diagnosis. So that can make a real difference in whether you're being treated for the right uh, thing or not. That's even more complicated with the coronavirus and the shortage of uh, tests and that kind of thing. Um, there's also uh, literally an overnight embracing of uh, telehealth and that was because we all wanted to stay out of the germ infested doctor offices uh, the convenience is super compelling and you can get in touch with a doctor whenever you want even if it's 2 a.m and you have three sick kids and you have a fever you don't have to haul everybody into a car and and go to an er or an urgent care so we're seeing a huge rise in the popularity of telehealth so it was our 
honor and privilege to be able to bring that to EXP, uh, even before uh, rolled out their telehealth and even after NAR uh, rolled out their telehealth with a couple of free months, uh, what you guys brought from Clearwater with Teladoc to the EXP team uh, still beats the uh, the cost and the comprehension, comprehensive coverage uh, for telehealth alone. So we're seeing a lot of people embracing the use of that. It's actually included with all plans or people can buy it uh, just separately. It is uh, about $10 a month for a family. Great, you know, and I'm, I'm gonna sort of tick off the ones that I see in the chat here as, as they come up here as best I can so I don't miss any of them. Uh, and I have no idea what the answers are to these questions, but compared to an Affordable Care Act plan, What's not included in a Clearwater plan? What would the uh, sort of the, the consideration be there? That's that's another really good question. Um, it, it would actually be easier to answer it in the reverse. What's not included in the affordable care plans that are included in ours? But I'll uh, I'll do my best to answer it. Um, well, you can do it that way. That's good. There's, yeah, there's some pretty substantial differences. Um, both the Affordable Care Act plans, all of those that are um, available on the exchange have to meet some certain criteria and ours does as well. And that's speaking to Mike's point, if you wanted to find a solution that worked for everybody, um, but that also would meet the requirements, you know, there's still a few states that have a, a minimum leverage requirement like uh, California, Massachusetts. Um, so our plans, our plan options do that. Uh, so that's good. All of the plans have to include preventive care at affordable. Our plans come with preventative care at zero dollars out of pocket in network. And it is the largest PBO network out there, the PHCS network. And um, that's how Beth was able to find her doctors. And I'm not saying everybody's doctors are gonna be on there, but it's nationwide. Uh, what you can see with um, comparing a plan on the, on the exchange versus ours is typically those are HMOs and EPOs. And in both cases, those are very narrow networks. If, if you weren't aware of that, you know, let's say you're traveling and you get sick in another state, you may not have access to healthcare in that state, which is crazy. Um, but that is a limitation that comes with the uh, Affordable Care Act plans. They're able to, to have, you know, very narrow networks. Um, our plans include an open network across the entire country and actually the world for emergencies, uh, surgeries, uh, critical illness, you know, um, illnesses like cancer or ongoing treatment that can be very expensive. There's, there's literally no limit to where you can go. We had one customer, and I think it might have been an EXP agent who was skiing in the Alps uh, with his family and fell and broke his leg and got it set and taken care of uh, in Italy. And it is no problem to do that, which is great because there's a lot of peace of mind in knowing once you make the decision to get a plan, you know that that's covered by your, your family. Uh, those are some uh, main indications of differences. Another one would be on a plan that's on the exchange, there's, there's a deductible. And the deductible is a crazy amount. It's now up to $8,100, which is, is just you know, 16000 for a family. It's just so high. And ours have... I think of them as bite-sized deductibles. They're smaller amounts. Um, it can be $1,000, you get to choose, and it depends on where your budget is and what makes the most sense for your family. But the options have $1,000, $2,500, or $5,000, and that's the amount that you'd pay out of pocket. Something that's important to know as a distinction is, compared to the plans that are on the exchange, you'll, you'll see something on the plans that say, Max out of pocket is $8,100, but that doesn't include surprise billing and balance billing, which are two of the gotchas that are kind of hidden in insurance. Um, without going into a lot of details, the sort of thing like when you go to have a surgery and the anesthesiologist isn't on your plan and everybody else is, you still have to pay that outside of the $8,100. So those are the highlights of uh, the, the main differences. That's great. And I know, uh, just so folks in the audience know, you know, that whatever position they're in at the moment, uh, they're not alone. We did a survey, I think, last October, and mm -hmm. uh, three segments, right? You want to talk, uh, yeah, what sure. were the results of the survey? And I think they mirror the industry generally. They, they do mirror the industry generally. So 30% of the people surveyed 
uh, have no insurance. So they're, they're rolling the dice, you know, insurance plans that were available were terrible and expensive. So they're basically self-insured and hoping and praying that nothing bad happens. COVID comes along and it kind of will give you a cold bath of reality, like it could happen. Um, the, see, it's Kaiser that came out with the average cost for hospitalization to treat COVID is $35,000. It's so high. So that is uh, one, you know, one of the issues. Um, so 30% don't have any insurance at all. That's, we're very concerned for that group because there's so many ways that we're all exposed. Um, we have options that range from, you know, very affordable to, and, and very uh, limited. You can get just that sort of catastrophic sort of um, plan that covers you just in the case of the big expensive things, or you can get the ones that include doctor appointments, visits, co-pays, and we have a few different options. And I'm really proud of our team because they're, they're so good at asking questions and understanding what people's needs are. There's no cookie cutter solution. Uh, so we, we tailor the options to mirror what the customers really need. Um, another 30% are on a spouse's plan. And we're seeing a lot of spouses losing their jobs and therefore losing their health benefits. Uh, we don't have numbers on that exactly, but we've seen a, a, you know, an uptick in hearing from agents, CHP agents who were on a plan and now they're not. And even a few that were part-time EXP, full-time somewhere else just to keep the benefits and now they don't have that job. Uh, so they've got to uh, look for other other options to find benefits. And then only about 10%, uh, was it 10 to 20% are, are on major medical plans from the exchange. And that seems low, but then it's not surprising considering um, it is so expensive and uh, it's so limited in what it can do for people. Um, so that, that gives you a break. And then a handful, uh, the rest are kind of spread over health shares and a few other different options. You know, if I remember correctly, I think that I, I read that the, or that the average uh, ACA plan for a family runs about 2000 per month, or maybe that was an individual number. Um, but, you know, brass tax no, that's here. that's right. Yeah. But, but so what about when we talk about affordable plans here and understanding that there's the basic plan and then there are other, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, components that are optional as well. What, what kind of numbers are we talking about so people in the audience understand? I mean, I'm, for a basic plan for an individual monthly and then for a family. Right. It's a really good question. So, and Beth quoted, she, you know, her plan is about $400 a month for her. Um, and as you look at uh, the plans for people who are 18 to 29, uh, those start from $250. Um, a family can usually, uh, 550 to 850 depending on the options you choose and compare that to like you said 2000 we see much higher than that in a lot of cases as well uh, so that's exactly what she encountered was these are the savings and it can be dramatic not only is it savings on the monthly amount but then when you go out of pocket for something when you do have a need that arises that eight thousand dollar deductible is a hefty lift and compare that to a twenty five hundred dollar uh, bill that you put on your credit card, maybe, or maybe you pull some money out of your HSA account, uh, that's not nearly as big a financial hit. And that's part of where that peace of mind comes from that Beth's talking about. Excellent. Okay. Bobby Martins, a uh, good friend, uh, you know, unparalleled enthusiasm, great agent out in uh, San Diego. Um, maybe just if you would take us through your journey uh, with respect to EXP Healthcare and the impact it's having on you, on Cheryl, on the kids entire family. Thank you so much, Jason. And hello, everybody. So nice to be here and share my story. I'm going to go ahead and start back in 2010 at the beginning of the Affordable Care Act. Um, not to get political, I'm not going to call it Obamacare or anything like that. We'll call it the Affordable Care Act. Uh, we were told that we were not going to lose our doctors. At the time, we had just uh, um, had our second child. So we didn't really have a need anymore for a really good plan. Um, so we had uh, downgraded our plan to, um, I think it was about $550 a month at the time. And we had amazing doctors at Scripps, um, you know, with, where we had our children. And 
so we were, you know, we were really loved our doctors. And so when we were told that, uh, that uh, the Affordable Care Act would allow us to keep our doctors, we were very excited and we're like, okay, this could be, could be good for us. Turns out that was false and uh, we were not able to keep our doctors anymore. Um, the plan that we had completely was eliminated 100%, it was gone. So it really, that plan or that, uh, that act really changed the whole uh, health insurance market quite a bit. And, um, you know, I, I was wondering how the heck is this supposed to be? Why do they call it the Affordable Care Act? All it's doing is making everybody's insurance go up. And so every year it went up probably 15 to 20 percent. And so, um, and we had to uh, switch from Scripps, I'm sorry, uh, from Scripps to Sharp. And so we had to get all new doctors. We were paying more money for doctors we didn't like as much, which was sad. And, uh, you know, we're very healthy, the four of us, um, you know, extremely healthy, don't really use uh, it, but going for your, your, your periodic checkups. And, uh, and so, when uh, this last year, it went up to, it was, I was about to pay um, $1,275 a month. You know, that's a huge, that's, what is that, 150% increase approximately from where we were at the 550. So from 550 to 1275 over the course of nine years is what that went to. And so when you guys announced that you were doing, you know, trying to do the health care, I honestly was like, oh, that's really, really cute of them to try this. I mean, there's no way that this is going to be um, a competitive plan. And so, but I, 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 I told my wife, I said, hey, would you mind looking into this? And, you know, because she usually handles that kind of, that's that kind of stuff. And so she called and was like, Bobby, you're not going to believe this. It's much cheaper than what you know, we're being quoted currently, plus the, the way that the deductible works, it really is in our advantage because we don't get sick very often. And, you know, let's say I, uh, God forbid, was it to get in a car accident, you know, I'm not having to spend thousands and, well, you have to spend, what is it, 2,500 uh, for per incident. Um, and so with this plan, you know, it just, it saves so much money. And so, um, so I've been very, very happy with it so far, and my, um, you know, my wife and I um, haven't really used it a lot uh, since uh, since having it. Uh, my my son has uh, has a slight case of psoriasis, and so uh, she he was able to do a, a teledoc uh, visit, you know, during this COVID uh, crisis, and so that kind of came in handy, but. Uh, but yeah, the, the amount of money that you can save with this, I mean, we're paying 855 a month for a family of four. I think that, um, you know, is a, is a reasonable uh, cost when you look at what I was about to pay. And here's the kicker. Not only can I go to Sharp, I can also now go back to Scripps and see some of our old doctors because the way that the network is set up, um, you know, there's a lot of doctors in the network. And so... That was one of the things that we really, really liked a lot. And, uh, you know, so, you know, God forbid we don't have to use this uh, too often. But, you know, in the event that we do, um, I feel very confident that uh, the company will be there for us. And, uh, and I'm happy to be saving $5,000 every year, you know, on this plan. So I'm really stoked about that over a 10-year period. That's $50,000. If I do it right and, and uh, put that money elsewhere, buy leads with it, do whatever I need to do, I could turn that money into a lot more. So very, very excited um, to that, you know, to be a part of this plan, part of this company. And uh, that's my story. Fantastic. Hey, Mike, I know we're getting a lot of questions about open enrollment or, you know, uh, can you just talk a little bit about how that works? Both for an yeah, agent who's been with us for a while and then somebody who, who joins us new. Absolutely. And, and I saw that's coming through as well. You know, here's the great thing is there is not an open enrollment period. There's actually 12 times during the year, the start of each month, that either you or a joining agent can come in and start a, the plan, um, which is excellent. You don't have to wait till the standard Affordable Care Act open enrollment period. Um, so that, that's one of the exciting things. And um, if you join one of the options, and you say maybe four months down the road, 
that you want to change one of those options, you have the ability to do so. So that, that's one of the cool things. So no open enrollment. There's 12 times a year that you can actually get into uh, these agent healthcare options. Yeah. Go ahead, Margo. Sorry, I was just going to jump in and add an additional uh, bit of flexibility. People can actually enroll as late as, this is a new, a new development, they can enroll as late as the um, 15th of the month today. You could enroll today and have a back date for May and you'd still have uh, your plan in place for the rest of the month. That's a new, uh, a, new, a new bell and whistle we've added to make it even sweeten the deal a little more for people. Wait, wait a sec, so back date? To the, to the first of the month, meaning if, if I had, I mean, can you just explain that a little bit more in terms of, does that go back and apply retroactive coverage for, for visits that may have occurred prior to that were it, for... it, it doesn't do that, but in states where you're required to have coverage, it does meet that requirement. Okay, super. Uh, Joe Sonona, and uh, this, this one's sort of special to me because I, you know, we were at NASDAQ in the after party in New York in January, and... Uh, we got to talking and you shared with me your story. And it was really, I think, the, maybe the first story that I had heard, um, you know, that, that really, I mean, I, I, I got a little bit emotional about it. Uh, you're out of New York. Uh, tell us a little bit, Joe, about your situation and, and uh, uh, what you, you know, what the situation was prior to EXP Healthcare and what it is today. Sure, sure. I, um, children, ages now 10 and 6. And for a period of time, we didn't know what to do. We were very, very confused, very scared, because we, um, our health care coverage just kept going up and up. Every year, without even so much as a phone call or even a check to see how our health was, our premiums would go up at least fifty to a hundred dollars uh, per month, and just escalated to the point where we see the letter that our health care would go up by January this year. Go up to eighteen. Oh, you're cutting out. A little bit there, Joe. Sorry, our health care would go up to eighteen hundred and fifty dollars a month, one thousand eight fifty. From what? What was the What was the number before that? For eighteen fifty. Before uh, we were, we jumped from um, fifteen fifty to up three hundred dollars, starting okay. this January. My wife and I looked at each other and I said, we can't do it. We, you know, it's impossible. I'm, I'm already struggling at the 15th month. And I, um, I don't know what to do. And under the Affordable Care Act, I said, maybe we should just have the children um, covered and we'll forego our, um, our health coverage. That you didn't have to have health coverage anymore. I said, uh, I can't do this. You know, and that's... Um, I was new to EXP, EXP April 1st of 19, and um, I had heard rumors that it was that uh, anything is better than what I'm paying now, and maybe with my uh, new uh, real estate uh, office, I could um, uh, change that. And, you know, I went and I looked into my association. I looked onto the New York Association. For a family of four, they, I was getting quoted close to almost twenty-seven, twenty-eight a month. Saying to myself, "This is ridiculous." I belong to an association, New York State Association of fifty-six thousand members. Nobody could get this premium lowered, and the quality of care. Let's talk about that. I couldn't choose doctors that I had my existing going around in the circle and I said, all right, I'm going to keep, uh, back then it was 1450 and then it jumped to 1550. So you work to pay your bills. And I, that's what I was doing. I was working to pay my bills and I, I just, I was so, um, pressed about it that I told my wife, I said, this is, this is crazy. Uh, let's forego 
the parents and we'll just keep it for the children. We're two healthy individuals, but you never know when something's going to happen. So um, in comes the uh, uh, spider, the water, and tries okay. to look into it. Just keep holding that button down, Joe. We're, we're losing you just a little bit. Oh, okay. No, I'm sorry. I, can you hear me now? Yeah, you sound good. So I said, uh, so in comes uh, clear water, and I said to my wife, I said, let's look into this. And um, my sponsor uh, in EXP was also looking into it as well. He's a single young man, uh, Juan Baronetti, and said his uh, premiums went down from uh, 900 to, I believe, he pays 275 now. And, and then I said, oh, give me that number. But quick, I said, because anything is better than what I'm about to pay, which is 50. Um, when we called the lady, I had a, I said, I, I said, could you repeat that premium, that new premium quote again? Because I, I can't believe what you just said. It went from, um, what I was about to pay 1850, 791, with a, a substantial savings that now I could breathe. Not only could I breathe, but now I can add dental insurance for an extra hundred dollars where I didn't have it before. And uh, I have to tell you, I choked up when I heard that number because I said it could have never been done. If I hadn't joined this company. Juan and I didn't have that conversation about joining the EXP. And I believe in faith. I believe in all things. You're, you're meant to be somewhere where you're supposed to be and where I was supposed to be. It was like a calling, you know, it was like an answer to my prayers. And get choked up when I, I think about what could have been. And and uh, thank God I'm here to tell this story. I wanted to share this story with everyone here. And hope for you, that you'll Joe, share this story with everyone. <laughs> so, Joe, going, going from... What was going to be 1850 down to 791? Uh, what about the quality of care? Your ability to switch doctors or, or choose nothing who you like? changed. My doctors are the same. I still was able to keep my doctors. I was able to uh, my own my dentist. Um, I was able to keep everybody. N nothing went unchanged. It, I, I think it, it just. I think they saw the um, refreshing look in my face, and I I haven't been. Um, doctor to uh to do a to take um well i did a physical and I, nothing uh, i i'm not i'm nowhere near dissatisfied with with any quality of the inch like a breath of fresh air and uh i tell this story to everybody who is a real estate agent outside of exp and you know they they look at me like i got three heads no, no, it can't be. I said, yes, it is. I'm living proof. Great. Thank you for sharing that. And, uh, you, and Beth, I saw you put something in there about telehealth. I've used it. I had a phenomenal experience several weeks ago. Um, you've used it well, it sounds like, as well. Uh, yeah, when we, were, when we rang the bell at NASDAQ, uh, uh, so I flew back from LaGuardia, and the next day it didn't feel so great. Um, the day after that, I had 100, and then 101, and then 102.5, and I thought, you know what? Now's the time. Let's try this teledoc out. So I literally had the plan for a month, and I set up the teledoc app, and the, I even took a picture of the thermometer, and right away, the doctor was like, you know, here's Tamiflu, and gave me a million different things. Um, I, I've used teledoc actually three times, and it's just phenomenal because I have put in my time with doctors and hospitals and nurses. I don't ever want to have to go to a doctor again. And so, and also at 42, I know my body, I know my health, and I want to be able to use Teladoc and say, hey, I know what's wrong. Here it is. This is what I need. And they are great. 15 minutes later, the prescription's called into the pharmacy, and it is easy peasy. I can't agree with, with Bobby, with Joe enough to tell you guys 
this is such an easy, it's, it's so user friendly um, from the representatives to getting your prescriptions to finding your doctors. You don't sit on hold for 20 minutes like you used to with any other insurance companies. Um, there's just a real human quality about it. It makes it so special. That's great. Now, Margo, um, you know, I'm here, you hear a story like Joe's and it's occurring to me, I mean, at times this has to be enormously satisfying work. Uh, what, what, uh, you know, you hear numbers like 1850 down to 791, or you hear Beth saving, you know, 8,400 a year, Bobby saving 5,000 a year. And if I'm in the audience and I'm listening to this, I might say, well, you know, what's the catch? I mean, how is it, how is it that you guys are able to do this? It's, it, we get that a lot. Sounds too good to be true. And we all know what uh, to think. If it sounds too, be, too good to be true, it may not be true. So we're all programmed to be skeptical. And I saw another question um, in the stream here about what's different. How are you able to reduce the cost that much without sacrificing? Uh, the, here's a, a handful of different innovations that we've used. Um, we have an interesting backstory. The real quick version is uh, our CEO has been um, executive leadership in the insurance industry for years, and he just realized there's got to be another way. There's just got to be. And so he and his uh, co-founder, um, Jason, so Doug Sherman, Jason Sherman, uh, found a way and created a way, and they, um, one of the things they realized was that the 1099, the self-employed, market was really underserved. There's so little available for individuals. It's mostly geared towards groups. And uh, what we have is um, we've cracked the code on how to make it available for individuals using technology um, and all of the smarts that uh, we collectively brought to the table from different industries. Uh, but here's a couple of the highlights of, of the innovations that have made us able, have positioned us to be able to bring such savings to the market. And, and you're right, Jason, it's immensely satisfying to talk with agents and help save them money. We get tears sometimes and joy, and yeah. it is a really rewarding job, especially considering the way things continue to get more and more expensive. So one of the ways that we are able to provide this at a lower cost is we don't cover the 65 and over because Medicare does a good job of that. That's where about half of all claims come from that age group. Um, the second thing is that uh, we don't allow um, we don't work with a, a network that uh, where we negotiate fixed rates. The average, um, no, they do no expensive new network allows us to negotiate with the rates. So we're able to bring the savings directly down um, the bottom to the to the uh, to the agents. Um, we we've also found that when we combine two different types of products, one's insurance, uh, one is medical cost share then we get economies of scale and together they're more powerful than uh, most of the major medical plans. Um, we knew we wanted to create a high touch concierge level service and I just beam when I hear Beth talk about uh, the level of service that she's, um, she's that, that's our goal and that's what makes us you know get up every day and, and do what we do is helping agents take their mindset off of worrying about health care and the cost and put it back where it belongs on their families and on bringing their business uh, to the level where they want to bring it. Well, I you know I can remember and I, we'll go to audience questions direct so people can turn on their mics because I know there's a lot of stuff in the chat box. There are a lot of a lot of comments, but I want to echo what Mike said because I remember we were talking about this uh, you know, a couple, I guess probably back in November or something and and the, the conversation revolved around the fact that if an agent was getting a plan today uh, that was a good a, a plan that was going to be better for them than what Clearwater could offer that was going to be less expensive than what Clearwater could, could offer that there would be complete transparency around that and that Clearwater would you know do what was best for the agent and not do what they needed to do to, to generate income and, uh, and and that was a real driving force I just want to echo that I know Mike Mike said it as well. Uh, before we go to audience questions, and, and I, I, I ask this because I know you're getting a lot of inquiries along these lines, and uh, I think Randy said we're, we have this on the YouTube channel, so there's something, you know, you'll, you'll all be able to go and grab the video off of the EXP Realty YouTube channel and share it with other agents within your network or people who you know uh, who either their spouse has lost a job and they no longer can get the family coverage or agents who don't have coverage at all. Uh, there's just so much, I, I imagine, fear out there 
uh, at the moment. Uh, but Margo, when we when it comes to agent attraction uh, and and trying to you know really help our agents help other agents, I know you guys have been getting a lot of requests. What are some of the other things that our agents can do to try and get the word out? We we have heard a lot of requests. Um, is my is my mic working well? Can it you is. hear my voice? You okay, great. All right, great. It's showing me yellow, so I wasn't sure. Um, yes, we, uh, it, we're delighted to have a lot of demand from brokers at EXP who have a team underneath them, and they want to advertise and promote that they are able to deliver better health care options at a lower cost to agents they recruit. Um, we've been called upon to talk directly with uh, potential recruits, and when our bandwidth is, uh, is such that we have time to do that, we are always happy to accommodate that. Uh, we have seen more than once that that's the, the tipping point for uh, agents considering a move to EXP. Um, so the, with the cost differential, the expanded network that's nationwide and international for um, the big expensive items, we have a drug plan that is comprehensive and through OptumRx, and the drugs start at $15, $25. Um, these are all very meaningful and refreshing numbers that people haven't seen in a while. Uh, so it's very compelling because even compared to a lot of uh, spouse plans, even then we are seeing that a lot of times we're able to save people money. And especially if there's been a layoff, maybe there's COBRA, but of course COBRA can be very expensive because it's no longer subsidized by the employer. So um, we really encourage people to, to uh, advantage of, actually we're about to launch a, uh, a new, so this is, you know, fresh on the street, we're about to launch a new um, broker agent uh, website with some um, assets where they can have a presentation and videos and things like that so that they can send their prospects and potential recruits uh, directly to the website. We want, we're here to help you build your business as well. Okay, fantastic. And uh, Mike Vane, last question before we open it up for everybody. The, uh, uh, what's the one, if you had one thing that you'd like to see every agent do this year when it comes to, to health benefits, what, what might that be? You know, and what I'm, I'm hearing, Beth's story and Joe's story and Bobby's story, um, it, 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 you know, I'm glad we're in an avatar form because it, it's emotional. I can cut my mic, uh, uh, you know, you don't uh, hear that, but I know that's that's for everyone. Everyone has their different scenarios, and I never want someone to have to decide: Do I continue my business, or do I have health insurance, or um, you know, do I? go without any type of coverage whatsoever because that's what I can afford um, uh, uh, being that thought. So what I would love to see is every agent know that, you know, you don't have to wait until the Affordable Care Act open enrollment to look at this and make uh, any type of decision that would be best for you, best for your family, best for your business. Take a look at it now. Um, and the EXP agent healthcare workplace group, there are sessions that are going on to help educate you, inform you. Uh, the concierge team is there to help you understand. And if you are on something that is better for you now than, uh, than what the EXP agent healthcare would be, they're going to tell you that. So start to do that now before you get to the open enrollment. And if you don't have any coverage now, take a look at it. So that's what I would I would say is just don't wait, take a look at it now. Awesome. Okay, so let's uh, uh, appreciate everybody's active participation in the chat. Who's got some questions? Who wants to turn on their mic? Are there questions that haven't been answered or, or uh, other questions? Uh, please go right ahead. Yes, Jason, this is yes. Jan Wilsenden from Portland, Oregon area. Hey, Jan. Uh, hi, thank you so much. This is really, really helpful. Um, we have, we are currently on a Blue Cross Blue Shield Regents plan in Oregon. Um, our private insurance broker that we've been working with for the last five or six years, um, we told them all about Clearwater because we're, we obviously want better cost savings here. And he said that it's not a reliable group because it's a group pool of money and it's not like a registered insurance company. And so I don't, we're confused on this. Okay. Margo? 
Happy, happy to take that one. Um, th that just speaks to how confusing the whole industry uh, can be to absolutely everyone. You're so not alone in, uh, in being confused. So the Department of Insurance is, is a federal um, department and then there are state departments. Uh, so there's an insurance commissioner in each, uh, each state and they do regulate insurance companies that are in the insurance business. Medical cost sharing is a principle based on sort of think of barn raising. So it is not insurance. It's a medical cost sharing where the community pays out for major needs. And I'm sure the first thing that comes to mind, because it came to my mind uh, when I first heard about this plan, well, how do you know there's going to be enough money? And uh, what we've learned is that when you restrict who gets the plan, meaning not people over 65, and when you have a plan that's that allows for the preventatives, the doctors, the diagnostics, and the drugs through an insurance plan, so that part is the insurance, it is on the uh, PHCS network that I mentioned before is national, big national network. So that part is insurance, and we pair it with uh, the cost sharing for the major medical, um, the really expensive things. Uh, a couple of points to note about that, they have uh, seven times the amount of reserves that they would ever expect to need. Um, and this model has been out there working for, I believe it's 30 years. There's 2 million people um, on some version of a health share plan. Um, and, it, and it works really well. It does. Who it's not for are uh, people in the middle of a cancer treatment regimen, uh, people who have several different conditions going on at once. Um, but what we as Mike said, do when we're talking with um, each of the consultants, it's just the church groups uh, exactly made, made the, that model um, popular. Um, and what we see is that, I, I just lost my train of thought, so I was talking about the church group and then the uh, medical cost sharing. Um, we've, we've seen it work really well, and one of the things that is key about this particular medical cost sharing is that it is um on it is not on the patient to pay the bill and then get reimbursed that's how it's done in some of them but in our in our uh example that's not what happens um so you don't have to go out of pocket you know run up credit cards to get through um and wait for reimbursement and that's how some of them work this one does not work that and that way and the turnaround is um sometimes it's two days it's two to five days so it's fast does that answer your question yeah, that's super helpful because he did talk about this medical cost sharing model as mm -hmm. running out of money, and that would be the big scare. Um, it's really scared us. Um, who can we talk to? Can we talk to you directly? Is there about all this offline? Because we have a bunch of questions. You do? Yeah, we are happy. I'm happy to get together with you or have you uh, set up a call with uh, one of our, our colleagues. Uh, one of my um, consultants who can walk you through it's a it's a very a lot of people are used to insurance as we knew it and we'd like it to continue in the way that we knew it but it isn't um, one of the uh, misunderstandings that i think most of us have about insurance is well if it says the max out of pocket is eight thousand dollars then that's the most i'm going to pay out of my pocket i know i have to spend that much before the plan will kick in and then it'll pay 80 percent of an inflated rate so i still have to pay 20 percent but it'll say that's your max out of pocket but there's still gotchas built into um, traditional medical insurance like balance billing and uh, surprise billing and they're allowed to do that and that's going to cost you outside of your um, your your deductible so those things are built into the insurance model so it's it's not as pure and straightforward as we would like it to be. Uh, but those are just the realities. Super. Okay, what's the best way for Jan to, to uh, connect with you? It's probably in the text chat there. Yes. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, I, I, that in I there. just dropped it right in there. So it's at expagenthealthcare.com slash contact, and we'll set up an appointment with, uh, with Clear, Clearwater here. Okay. okay. Thank you awesome. very much. Thank you for the oh, question. you're welcome. Ray, go ahead. Yeah, I just have two questions. One is, uh, I understand that you do not cover anyone age 65 and above. One. That, that is correct. And then pre-existing conditions, 
is like a tiered three-year wait plan? That is a good question. We actually, we ha let me address that head on. Um, Pre-existing conditions are defined as treatment within the last two years. We do a two-year look back. Um, so if you had a stroke a year ago and you're fine, then you would have a year uh, before you'd be eligible to receive sharing for stroke-related uh, conditions or symptoms. However, everything else is still going to be shareable. And if you have the copay plan, that's the insurance part of it that addresses doctor visits. You can still go to urgent care. You can get x-rays. You can uh, get an MRI for $200. Uh, you can see specialists. You can see primary care. You can still do all of those things for your pre-existing condition. Uh, so the only part where it matters, where it is applicable, is to the large healthcare expenses. If you go a year with um, no symptoms and no additional need to seek treatment for that condition, then you have access to $25,000 in sharing in year two. It goes up to $50,000 in year three, and uh, it caps at $125,000. Oh, asthma is a, uh, that's a really good question. We get that one a lot, and um, for people who have asthma, mostly I find that they are they have to have medication, see their doctors regularly, but this doesn't typically involve hospitalization. Is that right? So I have another question. Sure. Why is it that and most group plans always accept all employees of a company, no matter what their age. Why is it that uh, it was decided to be cut off at 65 or 64 as you have it? Right, that is a decision that we, that the, the peop, that, that we made because 50% of the cost associated with uh, healthcare come at age 65 and beyond, and Medicare is a really good solution for that, and we couldn't compete with that. So we decided to focus on the uh, part of the market that we can um, best help and save the most money and deliver the best benefit to. Uh, Margo, I got a question. Thank you. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Let I had a, I had a to piggyback on your uh, statement about strokes. I had a stroke in uh, 2016, and I'm 60 years old. So if I joined now, I mean, I would guess I would be eligible for your coverage up for another four years. But would my um, pre-existing stroke affect me in joining now? It would not because that was four years ago where you're only doing a two-year back. So a stroke that's four years ago, cancer that was five or further years ago um, are not considered pre-existing conditions. So, okay, so yeah, that, that's cool. And I could join and be in until 65. That's right. Okay, where do I sign? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, he, he knows I'll make money, so I, I got you. No, but anyway, yeah, what do I do? Uh, we'll, you put that, we'll put that link in the text chat one more time. Yeah, you yes, guys please. have a few more minutes? Do you have a few more minutes, just uh, Margaret? I do, yes. Okay, I want, I want to make sure. Sure, everybody's got a question, can get their question answered. I saw Sheila Bezeron, and I was expecting you to ask this one. What about Puerto Rico? That is a great question. Um, I actually don't know. I will okay. have to get back to you on, uh, on Puerto Rico. Ah, okay. Great job on stumping me. I thought there wasn't anything I didn't know. <laughs> uh, you mentioned caps on the amount, payment amount from the health savings. If you got something catastrophic, cancer, or something that's going to be... Uh, that's an Very excellent question. question. What, what happens? Right. Great, great question. Um, the only place there's a cap is on those pre-existings. So if you had a, uh, if you had a, let's say a hip replacement a year ago, um, you wouldn't be eligible for sharing the first year. In year two, you'd be eligible for 25000 In year three, it would be fifty. In year four, uh, Year four, the maximum is, uh, and beyond, the maximum is 125. Um, but for things that are not pre-existing, for everything else, so if you were to get cancer, and even if you had cancer five years ago, that's not a pre-existing. If you got the same or a different kind of cancer, uh, that'd be a new need. There's actually no cap at all, which if anybody has been through 
uh, cancer, you know, that can be two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars easy. Um, so there's no cap on the rest of the sharing. And Michael, uh, Tatiana was nice enough to put the, the link that you need right in the text chat there again. Uh, anybody, any other questions? Can I, um, can I ask a question? Of course, Julie, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, I have uh, this insurance, by the way, and I absolutely love it. It is saving me over $1,000 a month with my family of four. Have used the Teladoc. It is amazing. And Marco just reached out to me because I did happen to, I guess I'll share. I am just turned 50, which made me go into a different bracket. And she set up appointment with me because she says it's going to, she's going to put me in a different bracket, but actually there's been some changes. So it actually might save me some money. So I'm super excited about that. But my, um, yay. my question was, oh, yes. I was just saying, yay. <laughs> oh, yay. <laughs> Um, I do have a question was when I first got the insurance, I was really trying to understand how it all worked as, you know, it's different t terminology. Um, uh, and I was watching several videos of how, you know, to communicate with your doctors about payment and, you know, things like that. It, where I can't remember where I found um, those videos. Is there like a link or or somewhere where I could watch those again because I just, um, they were really good and I don't know where I found them. And it was basically, they helped you um, communicate to your providers on payment um, mm -hmm. and things like that. Yep, that's a, that's a great question. Um, well, I will, I will, we try to have things on our website that are helpful and uh, we are adding a whole bunch of new content um, here in the next few weeks, and um, that I'm just going to make sure that that's at the top of our list, that we include that so that um, we have more assets available to you to help you navigate and um, make your way through the system. Um, in a nutshell, you're a, for the doctor visits, um, you have the HSA plan, I think, right, Julie? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so your plan um, means that you get all of your preventatives, the kids are going up immunizations, you get well women exam, um, you get when you're over 40 a mammogram, and happy birthday, you get a colonoscopy when you're over 50, and all of those are at zero dollars out of pocket on, on our plan. Um, where your self-pay is for uh, hospitalization, uh, surgeries, ongoing expensive treatment, so the expensive, the, the expensive types of procedures um, and treatment and that's where your your self pay and you collect the invoice from the providers. You give it to uh, Planston, that's our partner, and they will pay the provider directly, which is a huge benefit. Uh, that's one of the differences between the plan you're on, Julie, and uh, the new one. Great. Hmm. Huh? That's awesome. This is amazing. This insurance is amazing. I love you guys. We love you. All right, who else? Anybody else want to turn on their mic and ask, ask a question? Does this, um, do any of the plans allow for alternative medicine coverage? That is another, yeah, that's a great question. Um, that is another place where we like the, uh, the, the new um, options that we've added to our suite of uh, products is that they do provide for uh, some chiropractic and acupuncture. Um, so they're, uh, it's, it's more or lenient on some alternative um, medical treatments. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, Margo, are you familiar with a uh, term called uh, ULS with stroke patients? Oh. I didn't hear you. Hello? Okay, did you hear me? I am not, I'm not familiar with that term. Okay. Okay. Uh, as a stroke patient, what happens is sometimes your upper limb is sent to ULS, upper limb spasticity. It pulls your limbs into the center of your body. My stroke was on the left side. If I get Botox shots, it releases that spasticity for three months at a time. So every three months I can get this um, these shots and I can go play golf with Jason. 
So the thing is, is that um, the shots cost seven thousand dollars. Does your coverage will it cover that? The traditional part of this plan will not, but we do have other uh, drug plans to handle um, the really expensive ones. So we would need to talk offline, find out the name of the drug, and do some research, and we could get back to you on what the options were. And that's well, an example. Botox. The it's same Botox. thing. Wow. That, the same thing that you put in, in your skin. That's how your wrinkles get relaxed and they come out your face. Yeah, you right. Botox smooths out the uh, the wrinkle. They do the same thing in your muscle. And that way, your muscle doesn't pull in inward. And I still have, I mean, I was blessed to be able, when I, I had the stroke, I'm a uh, pre-med graduate. And when I had the stroke, I knew what was going on. And so I immediately was able to call EMS and get to the hospital quickly. So the stroke, it affected me, but it didn't do it as bad as some people unfortunately have with strokes. I mean, I can get around. I mean, I take care of myself and everything. It's just that, you know, my left hand is kind of limp. And I can feel whereas I want to squeeze it. And once I get Botox, I can do that. Well, uh, let's I'm see. Sorry. Message, message here from Joe. Uh, Dave, I think you had a question. Go, go ahead. You don't mind turning on yeah i just turned it on thanks um i've had decades and decades of back pain and i've never had surgery i know i have an l4 l5 herniated disc and occasionally i've had physical therapy and even acupuncture is that considered pre-existing condition so if i ever found myself in the next two years you know needing surgery that i wouldn't be covered that's a really good question, Dave. Uh, since it is ongoing, that would be considered pre-existing. And what we would do is talk with you about what that would look like as a self-paid patient compared to um, and what your cost would be to be on the plan for all the other concerns and help you weigh what that cost would be compared to what you're paying now and, and what, you're, what you're getting. And in the cases, and it happens about 10% of the time, in the cases where what the plan that you're on is better for you and your needs, we'll tell you that. Uh, we're relationship oriented, not transaction oriented. So if it's not the right plan, then we don't, we won't, we will tell you this is the best one to be on. And then you know, at least then you've had the consultation and you considered your options and you'll, you'll have an educated uh, uh, way to move forward with your plan. So best thing to do is schedule a call and talk with one of our consultants. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, we've probably got time for maybe one or one or two more. I just want to be respectful of, of everybody's time that's up here. Yeah, and, uh, I, have a, so. I have a quick question. Uh, would, would you say, I, I think it's great that EXP is trying to do this and provide, you know, cost savings to people. Uh, it's a hugely complex problem for our culture. There's no simple solution. I'm the, the only comment I have here is to try to help everyone understand what I think they will be getting with this coverage uh, and maybe to compare it to what you know is traditional insurance group insurance or an ACA compliant individual plan you, you you pretty much know what you have there it's covering everything and there's complete solvency for, by, for throughout the whole system but the exposure I think that you would have with this plan is an issue of solvency there's the potential that this plan could become insolvent. So if that didn't happen, this all sounds really great. But I think there's the potential that if the claims exceeded the amount of money coming in, it, there, there's the potential for, for having an insolvency. So you could find yourself in a situation where you have this coverage, there's, you're, you're between uh, right now and whenever the ACA open enrollment period is, and you may find yourself in a, without coverage. I, is, is that fair to say? I understand the question. This has actually never happened in the 30 years of uh, medical cost sharing. Uh, so one of the uh, other ways that we're able to save so much money is we negotiate with uh, with the providers, um, and they will they will always almost always take less because they're not having to pay an insurance company. There's not a middleman um, that is inserted into this process. So it's never happened. And one of the ways that um, that is uh, ensured that there's enough money is that they have 
seven times the amount that they need to. Um, the key is to make sure that there's always, always, always more than you can imagine uh, whatever being needed. So never happened in 30 years. I did want to take this um, opportunity to mention, especially for for uh, Dave, who I just spoke to a minute ago, that if, if you're talking to us and a major medical health insurance plan is the right thing for you and you're not already on one, we do offer those as well. So for people who have a lot of health care that's ongoing, that is sometimes the best option. And if you don't already have something in place, we can help you with that as well. We're full service. Yeah, and I would just, uh, this is Mike, and I would just double click on that from the standpoint of, um, I think that's that's one of the great things and one of the reasons we decided to work with Clearwater is not only is it the concierge looking at what is best for you. So if you have something today that is best for your scenario, you're going to make sure that you have that. Um, the second is, uh, as you look at these ESB agent healthcare options, um, if you prefer traditional insurance, there's that route as well to go down there saying, hey, I just want Blue Cross Blue Shield. There's that option as well. Um, and then third, I would just, as someone that has used traditional insurance, uh, I, I can say, yes, I know what I have. Um, I also had a, a, a son that went in for a surgery at the beginning of this year, uh, had a high deductible plan, and guess what? I knew what I had, and I had to pay out that rather large deductible, unfortunately, uh, from there. So I think, but that was my choice. That was my choice to get on that type of um, plan uh, from there. Uh, but just to reiterate, I think there is just the option to say, what is your scenario? What are you comfortable with? What would you like? And if you want to go the EXP agent healthcare route, you want to go traditional insurance route, uh, if it makes sense to stay on what you have, they're going to make sure that you get to what is comfortable for you. All right. Fantastic. Well, listen, I, I want to say, you know, this is a unique panel, and for agents who participate in this panel, they're not just giving their time, but they're really opening themselves up and sharing uh, details about themselves that, you know, uh, a lot of people wouldn't be comfortable doing and, and which might not otherwise happen. So I really appreciate it. Bobby and Beth, Joe, you guys have been fantastic uh, and appreciate very much your willingness to participate in this. Margo, I'm so glad you came. Uh, I can't imagine how Doug would. <laughs> I mean, you, you were phenomenal. Uh, and Mike, <laughs> Thanks for your commitment to making sure that uh, we do everything we can to show our agents so much we care about them. Uh, so thank you all very much for being here, and uh, uh, definitely go back and grab the links that, if you don't have them and, and reach out to Clearwater with any questions. And if uh, for some reason you stumble, reach out to me, and we'll make sure we get it in the right direction. Okay? Thanks, everybody.